All right, so uh, let's do a quick debrief of the flight that we uh, did today. Um, one of the things I wanted to chat with you about, and I think you noticed this in the landing pattern is trim, right? Sure. So I want to say show your hands. You can show your hands, right? Sure. Let's talk about, we talked about, you remember that thrust over the wing diagram we did? Yes, sir. You know? And you saw how significant it can really pull down, right? But just remember that the airplane's not like a car. You know, when you're driving down the road in a car, you're feeling the road. You're feeling, and you always, because you feel the road in a car, you're trying to find that same sensation in an airplane, right? So a lot of guys normally have a little bit of a pull on the stick or a little bit of a push on the stick, right? But air, is it really solid? No, sir. No, it's not, right? So because it's not solid, your, plane, your stick in your airplane needs to have a little bit of slop in it. In other words, the plane should still be flying straight, it should still be doing what you want it to do, but have some slop in it. And the reason why we want to have slop is because, you know, as we're flying through the air, right, you remember we're, we're looking at the airspeed, we're looking at the altimeter, you know, and we're kind of looking outside here, right? So, okay, hey, my airspeed's off or my altitude's off, okay, and so you pull up, right? But the next thing you do is you start looking back at your ground track, right? So now, okay, I'm focusing on the ground track. And now because you're starting to focus on something else, your body is naturally going to relax from where it was. So if the plane's automatically trimmed up, then when you go back to, back to looking at the airspeed or altimeter, it's going to be where you left it. Whereas if it wasn't trimmed and you had that pull on you and it's nose down, now all of a sudden the plane, the altitude or the airspeed is going to be off, either fast or low or something of that nature. So that's why we harp on you to have that trim going all the time. And as you know, in the landing pattern, you know, uh, right? It's that um, you know, transition point where it's really hard and you start your turn. I'm going to ask you for your, ask you to show me your hands about always halfway through the turn anyway to see if you're trimming, right? But that's typically if you have if you haven't trimmed well enough, you're going to be low at your 90. You're typically going to be fast, or you just might be low at your 90 and you know on airspeed. But typically you're going to be fast. That can also lead to the worst place you don't want to be low is in the groove, right? Sure. Yeah, we definitely want to be on altitude in the groove. So trim that thing up. As you kind of saw me say, hey, look, mom, no hands, right? So that's the way we want to be as, as we go. On. And just don't be afraid to kind of take your hands off the stick and see where it's going to go. Okay. It felt like we were on a roller coaster, right? Ah, yes, coming off the top because of the trim and the way it was. Okay, any questions about um, kind of why we use trim and the landing pattern, right? Yes, sir. Okay, cool. You see kind of how important it was to walk your pattern and think about how to correct when you're off altitude and airspeed now? Yes, you know? sir. And why you kind of want to have that beforehand because, again, you were kind of thinking about it and the scan was slow. You saw that, right? Yes, sir. Okay, cool. Let's talk about something we didn't talk about in the brief, and that was crosswinds. Okay? So, um, here's our runway coming into it, right? We had that right to left crosswind, right? Today we're flying runway 33 at Baron. And you remember I talked to you about you know, how to kind of keep the plane on the runway. And it even showed you, right, that low altitude, the ailerons, you know, they kind of control your drift, right? Yes, sir. And why does that work? Because this is your lift vector, right? Here's your lift vector here. You obviously have 100% lift here. You have zero, like we talked about in slip, you know? So if I wanted to reduce that lift, wing down top rudder and let it slide down. Well, in this case, I'm going to turn my lift vector into the wind. But if I do that, the plane's going to want to naturally turn into the wind, right? unless I kick that opposite rudder. Well, it's kind of the same way on final. Yeah, it's kind of like a slip, right? I'm turning my lift vector now into that wind, right? And I'm only using enough aileron to maintain my center line, okay? But I want you to imagine the rudder on this airplane. It's just like a rudder on a boat, okay? So if I turn, if I kick my rudder to the right, my nose is going to point right. If I kick my rudder to the left, my nose is, my nose is going to point left. So I have a question for you. Does the direction of my nose while I'm flying in the air control my ground track? No, it doesn't, right? 
So as I'm in the air, my rudder doesn't control my ground track. It's really my ailerons that control where I'm going to stay over the ground in relation to the runway. So as you're coming in on final, ailerons will control drift. If I put in a lot of aileron and keep the rudder in, I'm going to slide. And I showed you that, right? You remember that? We're over the runway. I showed you how we could slide the plane, even though my nose is pointing straight, increase my lip factor into the wind, kept my rudder lined up on the runway, and slid the plane over. And then when I got where I wanted, I take it out. Not all of it, because if I take all of it out, I'm going to get blown back over, right? So ailerons, only enough to control drift. Rudder, only enough to control a nose alignment in the air. Now, you remember I said I was going to tell you something in the debrief about what happens, why you need to put all three wheels on the ground. You remember that? You said, hey, my on wing says I only have to land two wheels. Let's talk about why I think you need to have all three on the ground. Yes, in the air, aileron controls drift and rudder controls nose alignment, but on the ground, what does the rudder do once you get the third wheel down? It controls your direction. It controls your ground track. And aileron still controls drift, okay? So, as I'm coming on the runway, right, and I'm still going down the runway, yeah, my plane might weigh 6,900 pounds all soaking wet, but as soon as I land, how much weight is really on the wheels? Zero. Maybe not zero, but it might be just a few hundred pounds, right? And why is that? Because as I'm rolling down the runway, there's still wind coming over the wings, therefore generating lift. So the plane is not near 6,900 pounds on the landing gear, okay? So the wind will still push this airplane over, and still the plane wants to weather vane, right? Imagine the tail of this is like the fletchings of an arrow. Here's my wind. The plane naturally wants to do that, okay? It wants to weather vane into the wind. So my rudder is going to control the ground track now because I have three points of friction. Because if I have two points of friction, right, they can kind of cast her. But if I have three points of friction, now that nose wheel is kind of maintaining straight, just like a tricycle. You know what I mean? The nose wheel is controlling that ground track. And to keep the wind from blowing me, right, because the wind's going to want to hit on this side of the rudder, it's going to hit on this side of the fuselage, it wants to push the plane off to the left. And you kind of saw that, right? Hey, you would land on center line, had a good crosswind correction by the end of the flight, but then what you did is you were kind of, hey, you had a good crosswind, but as soon as you went to flare, you centered your stick. As soon as you centered your stick, boom, you kind of landed a little bit off. And then you didn't keep your ailerons into the wind. In other words, you didn't put more lift on this wing, push more down on this one to keep it in the wind, and we kept getting blown over. Okay. So, as you come in on final, hey, you want to land on that upwind wheel. Here's the wind, aileron into the wind, right wheel down, left wheel down, keep the aileron in the wind, nose wheel down, now rudder is controlling your ground track. Your ailerons are still controlling your drift because you don't have a lot of weight on those wheels, right? Sure. You don't have that. All you have is very little surface friction, maybe a couple hundred pounds, maybe a thousand out of the six, seven thousand the plane really weighs. Okay? And I need to see all three wheels come down and show me what your ground track is because I can see if you can do a full stop landing, right? If I, you can maintain your ground track at 80 knots, you should be able to keep your ground track at 20. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. So I need to see from the future on, hey, all three wheels come down. I need to see what you're going to do with your rudders. What's going to happen? What, how are you going to do? Are you going to get squirrely on me? Are you going to get go pilot induced? You know, are you really going to start doing that? A good technique is if you find yourself off center line here, right? Correct back by the end of the runway, okay? Don't go real hard like this, right? Because then all of a sudden we can really get some stuff, okay? So hey, I'm here. I'm off center line. Keep that end run in the wind and just start correcting back by the end of the runway here. Nice, easy correction, okay? We don't want any real high yaka stuff, especially at high speed, right? Yes, sir. I do it too much, eh, possibility of a ground loop, but really you're worried about departing the surface, especially if I blow a tire. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. So any questions about how to kind of maintain your ground track on a crosswind? Yes, sir. Any questions about what you should do once your aircraft is on the ground in a crosswind? No, sir. Okay. So now, as we're kind of taking off, right, the airplane, we you know we got that crosswind correction, the ailerons are still into the wind all through the ground rollout, right? The rudders can still control my, my ground track. And then we're going to do that touch and go power up, spool up, nose up, okay? 
So as that power comes in, naturally feeding in the right rudder as the power comes in. We don't want to anticipate over, over too much, right? That's going to take us over. And obviously if we don't use enough, it's going to shoot me off to the left. So as the power comes in, start adding that rudder of a power up, aircraft spools up, get that nose up and in the air. And notice as soon as we pull up, this wing's going to dip. And that's normal. And then you're immediately going to find that the plane's going to want a weather vane now, which is kind of nice because, hey, we had these three points of friction and we couldn't weather vane, the plane gets in the air, it's going to dip, and you're going to notice that it's going to kick that tail right into the wind, just perfectly, and you are going to climb at that crab coming out and away. Okay, so don't be afraid that that wing's going to dip down as soon as you rotate. That's normal. Okay, we kind of want that, and it's and it's just almost you don't even really have to think about how it's going to naturally roll out. Don't worry about the ground loop. You'll notice that these wings here they kind of come up in a V, right? Mm -hmm. So they come up in a V here. So that also, as you are close to the ground, is going to keep your as you even if you rotate into it, there's still that ground clearance. You don't have to worry about that. Make sense? Yes, sir. Okay. So. Any questions about um, any questions about departing? You know the crosswinds approach, and definitely a, now the takeoff and touch and go portion of it for crosswind corrections. No questions. Okay, cool. How do you practice for that, right? So we talked about hey, we're going to walk around the whole pattern, PELs, all that fun stuff. So how are we going to do? Well, this is the one time you really need to sit in the chair, right? Because it's kind of tough to walk and think about doing that. So, all right, hey, imagine you have a crosswind right to left or left to right. And imagine flaring with that correction in there, right? With the rudder kind of opposite direction just enough. And imagine, hey, I'm swinging. Rudder's controlling that nose alignment. Aileron's controlling my drift. Hey, I'm a little bit off center line. Okay, I need to add that and kind of come over to the left a little bit. Okay, I got enough. I'm sure the aileron controls your drift. Okay. Rudder controls your nose alignment, and imagine doing that where you have that center line lined up. Okay, I'm over here. Well, the center line's here. Okay, you need to add that right rudder to center me back up. Okay? Hey, I'm a little bit off center line. I want to get up. Okay, let me add some aileron. Okay, slide it over. Okay, I'm back on. You know what I mean? Sure. Just the same way we talked about walking your landing pattern, getting that muscle memory high, low, fast, or slow. This is another one you need to play with while you're on the ground thinking about I'm a little off here left or right. Again, so you, when you see that stimulus in the airplane, right, you instantly know what to do, and now you're no longer thinking, you're reacting to reactions of that path past or prop process, okay? Uh, okay, so we really saw the importance, right, of, and this is just in summary, really saw the importance of, especially in the PEL procedure, right, let's kind of go over what you did anyway. Um, real quick. Was it like that? Yeah, I think it was like this. Got a runway five, a runway nine. Obviously, this would be two seven. Five and uh, two and um, two three, right? So here's two three. And what was this one? It was like a. Uh, let's just say this is three four and uh, so one two. Okay, this is Silver Hill where we went to today, right? So we kind of came into Silver Hill. You had your CDI set up. We're all coming in. And he said, hey, man, yeah, I'm lining up on runway five. And which one did you really line up on? Nine. Runway nine, right? So you kind of remember we saw, hey, it's important to, as you, to walk fly coming into and finding which runway I'm going to, especially when you have an OLF with a bunch of different runways, right? So we needed to be lined up at high key here, and you kind of did this number and lined up on this one. And I remember saying, and I kind of gave you a bunch of hints throughout, hey, which one are we on? Oh, I'm on five, I'm on five. Hey, what's that number say? Well, it looks like a six, <laughs> right? It was runway nine, right? So as you're kind of coming over the field, hey, take a look at those numbers. And also think about, okay, which way is north, right? Which way is north? That's going to help you. Hey, I'm heading eastbound. Ooh, that can't be runway five. You know what I mean? Sure. So you really kind of saw, see now, hopefully, the important of as you walk fly. And I just calculating that dega coming down, but what runway am I coming into? And where is that high key? So when you call, you know, the RDO, hey, I'm high key runway five. Really? Hey, I'm low key runway five. Uh, which runway are you going to? Which can make a difference safety of flight issue when it comes to training. Obviously in real life, I mean, if 
can get it down safe, there's not going to be anybody around. The RDO is going to clear the field. But you got to let them know it's an emergency, right? Otherwise, he's, thinking, he's going to think it's just for training. Okay? So kind of keep that in mind. We're going to look at that on a check ride. We're going to see what runway you line up. We're going to make sure you line up on the, the right runway, high key, all that. So that's something you really got to work on and get there, okay? Uh, I thought your altitude losing maneuvers were pretty good. I thought um, when you, when you, you know, because you did get the low key, you did have high key. Once I figured out you were going to nine and not five, you know, I kind of was like, okay, well, that seems to make some sense. So I thought you did a pretty good job of that. Um, again, just using that checkpoint, hey, here I am, low key, you know, is about, I don't know, two-thirds wingtip distance, which is a fuel cap or just inside, and that's going to point to your ground checkpoint. So as you come across, hey, I'm at 1,600 feet, and that's that poor performance checkpoint. You had a tendency to kind of forget the field from low key out. You just kind of started going out this way. It's not a normal landing pattern. The ELP is not a normal landing pattern. It's kind of a tighter one. Okay, I'm just going to draw a runway for you real quick here. Your normal landing pattern is going to kind of come out like this. Your ELP pattern is more of an elliptical, and it's going to be tighter coming in here. Okay. Uh, and so you kind of, as you got the low key here, you're kind of just driving out and then coming back. And so, yeah, you were kind of at 1,600 feet here off of that runway 9 instead of 5. But then we would get out here and all of a sudden we get low. And sure enough, what happened? That old IP stole your engine, didn't he? Sure. Killed that engine, right? And all of a sudden, oh, we're not going to make it, right? But the reason why is because you're going to turn that base key a little bit tighter, okay? Because you got a steeper descent rate, you know? So kind of kind of plan for that, right? And again, if landing is assured, what do we do? Landing flaps. Landing flaps. What if it's not assured? Hold the flaps, maybe even, you know, hold the gear or whatever, uh, or, you know, don't slip or, or whatever. And if you have an engine and you're low, what do you do? Idle. Yeah, well, if you have an engine and you're low. Oh, you do? low, excuse yeah. me. Uh, you add power of 60, 70%. Right. The one, and there was one time I stole your engine. I get, you had an engine the whole time, and, um, now here's our ELP pattern. We're coming across, going to low key. And one time you were kind of low here. You know, we need to be at 1,600 feet here. And I think you were like maybe 18 here or something like that. And you had an engine. And this was your glide path, right? So you needed to be up here on glide path and you were down here, right? Yes, and we even talked about this in the brief where we said, hey, if I have an engine, right? I don't want to take my time. I want to quickly get up here and do this, right? And what'd you kind of do? You just barely add some power. And what did I do? Failed your engine. And you didn't. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. So again, hey, if I'm low, quickly get up on profile. Because we're, again, we're going to lose your engine, right? We're kind of, we, we punish you. We punish you for making mistakes, right? Oh, you want to do that? We'll see how that works. Why we're trying to show you, hey, that didn't work, right? Next time plan so it does. That's what I, that we're all going to do it. Sure. Every IP is going to do it. Because we want to show you this is how your decision can affect your outcome. Well, no better way to show that than make it painful. So. Um, okay, any, any questions on PEL? How, why it's important to get quickly back up on profile if you got an engine? No, sir. Really, we'll look at that lineup, how to lose and All right, cool, man. Hey, overall, um, for where you are in stage, I thought it was a uh, it was a good learning experience flight, right? But what do we need to do now? We need to go out and you already know how to centralize, organize, memorize your information now. Now it's time to practice on your own, on the ground. Make those decision points for that PEL, that PELP on the ground. So now when you see it in the air, it's no longer a thought process. We're not just droning along. And also have that FTI, have that PEL procedure, both PEL and PLP procedure out of the FTI, just cold, right? Because you need that information to determine, deliver, reduce, and all the comm calls and all the stuff that goes with it. Okay. So, uh, like I said, you're doing okay for stage, but you really need to practice, man, uh, to get you where you need to be for a check ride, right? Because that's obviously not lining up the wrong runway is not going to pass a check ride, you know. Um, Like I said, I think your pattern's coming along. Uh, again, uh, looking for you to get those proper checkpoints. Um, 
it wouldn't be quite a pass and check ride today. Fortunately, you got a number of flights to go before you get there. But um, I think that that uh, you know, you're on track. Just continue practicing. You'll do just fine. So cool. Hey man, that's all I got for a debrief. You got anything for me? Anything that can be done differently, better? No, sir. All right, cool. Well, hope to see you next time. Hope to see you in the next stage. Yes, sir.